All right, I've shown this over and over and over. What here it is, the sun vibrates the electrons so violently on the sun that they escape. And when they do, they spin, 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 spin. And then as soon as they hit something that has matter, like the space station out here, they light it up. As soon as they hit this atmosphere that has molecules that are complete and nucleuses, they bounce. And what they do is they bounce off of those electrons, because they're nothing more than electrons. Some spin fast, and some spin slow. The slower ones have less impact. All energy is is impact. That's all energy is. It's how, it, it work is impact. How hard you can hit something. Now, as soon as they hit matter here, they give the different colors and so forth depending on the frequency and how fast it's spinning. And the frequency determines the angular momentum, which determines the weight of the the particle. That's all it is. Uh, and then it. it it hits the earth and it grows plants and all that business. When it re-radiates from the moon, you get a lesser frequency and you get the reds and so forth. You don't get the, the, the bright colors. Okay, so that's, that's, um, that's um, light. All right, this is very close to what I'm talking about, um, the attraction and the repulsion. There's an attractive force in here made by a certain lamination of the way the magnets are in place in here it simulates the nucleus which it has has um, negativeness radiating away from it but it still has positiveness now so they have a magnet here or whatever the attractive device is here um, but you can see what happens and here's what happens it, it can't it can't hit exactly like the orbits of, uh, of electrons and if it comes up, it, 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 that's it. Now, you, if you had one here and one here and one here or one here, they will surround these things. And this is um, what it does: is it creates magnetic fields that surround. See, look, see what it does. Now, this this is not understood right now, but we can see that it's it it finds a region in space around the nucleus which is where it has to maintain itself and that's the quantum distance we know all this already but we never really saw it I don't think so that's just the way it works alright this is what I'm claiming is that nuclear physics is wrong neutrons are negative particles and they are just a tiny bit larger than the, than the um, protons and there is always at least the same amount of nu uh, neutrons as there are protons so that means that if the neutrons are a little bit more negative, which they are because they are a little bit larger, uh, and they are negative, and that's why they're so always glued to um, protons, that means that the core of every nucleus, every single one, is going to be negatively charged, a net negative charge. What does that mean? That means that the, the, the electrons which are 1800 times smaller than one single proton, 1800 times, they approach the core of the nucleus because there are a lot of positivenesses there trying to bring in uh, electrons, but there is a excess negative because the neutrons, which are negative particles, are larger than the protons, therefore they carry an excess negative, therefore the, the core is net negative, Therefore, it repels the incoming electrons and keeps them in a very specific place, a very, very, very specific quantum state, a distance away from that nucleus, which is predefined by the number of protons and neutrons, and it will be extremely specific, and the organization of the orbitals will also be extremely specific, specific, which we fully understand, and they will have their own regions in space because they cannot be in, interact with the other electrons because of there's a principle, Pauli principle, Van der Waals principle, all these things. But it just all it means is it's magnets can't push each other around. They have a certain region they have to uh, occupy, and then after that, once they override that extreme region, things are going to happen that are, are I, I can't predict. But when they when things become so compacted into a region in space that they are not allowed, they are going to do something. And uh, it, it, first of all, it's going to give light, it's going to give heat, it's going to do that stuff. But if it's in a confined space, it's going to do something else which could be much more. And the reason that gravity is gravity is because the net negativeness of every single nucleus will always keep its electron at bay.
but it will always try to drag electrons in from anywhere and it will also try to drag all material in from anywhere because everything is attracted to everything because of the net negativeness keeping things away but the net but the very close positiveness draws things in and I'm going to show you that in, in magnets very 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 simple toys and I'll show you how, how it's uh, very simple and easy to see and that explains gravity explains light explains heat explains uh, everything that's just the way it is I frankly I can't believe what I'm seeing here protons and neutrons are in the center of the atom okay let's talk about that the proton is positive I can go along with that and it has a certain mass the electron is negative and I can go along with that and it has a certain mass which is very small 1800 times smaller than a proton the neutron has no charge that is ridiculous the neutron is negative and it is just slightly larger the proton so this makes this statement wrong too the charge on the proton and the electron are exactly the same size that's ridiculous they're 1800 times smaller that's why the electrons are stuck in their orbits because they come close to the nucleus but the nucleus cannot be approached because the positiveness of the nucleus pulls the electron but the excessive negativeness of the larger neutron which is really a negative particle keeps that electron at bay because the core of the nucleus is negative that is the whole reason for everything gravity is explained by this the attraction of the electrons is explained by this. The loosely held electrons in the outer orbital is explained by this. Everything is explained by the fact that neutrons are negative. That is it. Case closed. All right. It's as simple as this. Here's your here's your um, the nucleus, and see over here the neutrons are green, the protons are red. Well, the neutrons are a little bigger than the protons. The neutrons are, you know, like this size, and then they're minus charges. And the protons are this size, they're plus charges. That means you have an excess, tiny, tiny, tiny little extra negative. And every neutron is associated to a proton. That's why they're always stuck together. I don't know why they think they're, they're neutral. So they're, I, I'm calling them negatrons. Anyway, in here you have at least and always the same or more negatron, neutrons than the protons. So your net nucleus is always more negative. So you have a negative core always. However, you have all these positive particles pulling negatives as well. So the negatives start coming in. See these little dots? Those are the electrons. They're floating around from the sun because the sun spit them out of there because they achieved uh, escape velocity from all the heat and vibration and everything up there and they just fly through space until they hit matter which is this now they'll sort of hit and bounce around now when they f first come in they collide they create light and heat and all that because they bang into these which is the photo effect that the Einstein talked about he was right about that only it's not a wave it's a particle that hits this part like a ping pong ball like a cue ball bang and it pops it out of here either it goes out of here fast or slow or it hits there and vibrates and wiggles in here and causes heat so it's either light bing or heat or both which is primarily the case and they will only bounce off out of here certain uh, frequencies because of the magnetic distances that have to be maintained so that's the case with um, with particles that's all it is and and every single particle will be attracted to every single other particle except electrons electrons flee free float in space like they talked about forever the ether they are like liquid space they are they don't interact with each other because they're all they're both ne negative so they'll fly around or in the space in a, a vacuum of space but as soon as they hit matter they attach to it or they bang it and bounce off it but and this will also try to find other matter so all everything tries to find the nucleuses but the electrons will just float around amongst themselves and not hit anything until they approach earth and gravity on earth is is the earth itself pulling the 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 neg the um the light it's pulling the earth pulls because of the excess of um negative negativeness which pulls on the positiveness of the the cores that are in space it's just it's just the way it works we have more negatives on on earth than than positive so we're going to be pulling in 
uh, anything of matter, because that has a positiveness to us, and because the positiveness of the Earth, is, it also pulls negativeness, we're going to pull in these little tiny particles. So that is nuclear physics in a nutshell.